also. So we kind of. All right, and then what we're going to do is let me grab. I just remembered I got. I don't have a skillet, so let me grab that. Uh -oh. Skillet. All right, so we are going to get everything kind of cooking up. So we'll go medium, start. We're going to do a little vegetable broth. Just kind of like maybe a couple mm -hmm. tablespoons, whatever you'd like to add. All right, and then we've got, so then we're going to be, we're going to add the onions. So we've got red onions. You could do white onions, yellow onions. It just depends on what you have in the refrigerator. Since they asked for red onions, and it is kind of pretty when you put it in stuff in because it's that nice purple color, then I went ahead and, and did the uh, red onions. So I'll get those going, and then we're going to cook those until soft. So I got these on a medium high. Sure. What is the bread? So let me grab the bread for you. Pull it where you can actually read it. So it's Alvarado Street Bakery. It's sprouted California style. And it's really sweet. A lot of different uh, grains in it. But they have a gluten-free option too, if you want it. Yeah, there's definitely, you can do gluten-free. I was looking to see if it had, oh, it's here on the side. It has wheat. Yeah, so it's sprouted organic whole wheat. It's got, it's got wheat berries. It's got honey, barley, um, some barley, millet, rolled oats, cultured wheat starch sea salt, but they're absolutely lentils, and sprouted organic pinto beans. Healthy. <laughs> so that's the one I use. So that's the one I toasted up. But you can find, like you can do the Ezekiel. There's all kinds of things you can buy in the freezers. Or you can just get them at your regular like Whole Foods or Sprouts or any type of your like natural stores. And a lot of times too, you can actually buy the Udi. So the Udi line, if you're here in Colorado, it used to be called Udi's and there still is restaurant Udi's. But he has a Thai, which is his line of bakery goods. And so you can get the breads there and they get them at King Super. So it's all kind of in the, like the custom bread area, but you can find those and those are without oil. And those are really good. We've had, we've had like, um, what else? Food? So we had sandwiches. sourdough, we've yeah. had um, all kinds of just ciabatta bread, all that that's really, really good. And he's definitely all about healthy. Okay, so got the onions going. So we're gonna get, let those cook and then we're gonna go, then we're gonna add the celery. So I've got the celery in here. I actually was soaking it. So I'm just going to grab, so I don't need all the water. I'm just going to split it out. And that's because I cut it last night and I didn't want it to get, you know how that, and Jerry's grabbing the, um, the breadcrumbs again. But I didn't want it to get dried up. So that's why I just put it in cold water. It was in the fridge. Just cut that. Yeah, all done. And there's nothing better to me than like, you've got onions and you've got celery and you've got all this wonderful things. You could actually put in, because a lot of stuffings have carrots. So you could actually put in carrots if you wanted to too. This one doesn't have it, but I've added it sometimes because I'm so used to making stuffing. You know, I grew up and my mom always made stuffing. Of course, she used all the turkey parts and eggs and all that. And so I just, she always, first always started out with onions, usually so like onions, garlic, celery, and um, carrots. And so I have put carrots in, in this one before too. All right, then you've got apples. So you've got this really nice sweetness. So I think these are, these are your favorite apples, which are- Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp, which are really big right now. Definitely, he likes some organic. So I left, you can see, you can see I put all left the peeling on and everything. So that's all ready to go. Some nice sweetness in it. You don't usually see a lot of stuffings with apples, which is really good. But if you can't find apples, like, in the, like if you do it for some other time of year and you've got pears, you could actually substitute in pears or other types of fruit in there, which would be really good too. All right. And then if I let that cook for just a minute or two, then we'll add the spices. There's a lot of spices in this, which is, which is good. And this is like, when you smell it, you smell the sage and everything. It just reminds you of Thanksgiving. So we've got the spices, we've got sage, parsley, um, black pepper. I didn't put salt because uh, Jerry, we were talking, if you joined earlier and stuff, we have, we leave the salt out. If I want salt or something, I'll add some and nutmeg. And usually don't see a lot of nutmeg in um, dressings also. Um, but that's, but this is one that helps with like the apples and it just gives a really nice, nice flavor. 
And then we're going to add like a little bit of maple syrup, which you could actually substitute out date paste or a little bit of agave. And then we're going to add balsamic vinegar. So you get this like when the, the stuffing's like kind of a little sweet, but a little tart. And it's got crunchy because you've got the almonds. And then you've got, um, you can use cranberries. We didn't see any cranberries in the store. So we actually used, I have goji berries. And they are kind of like a, it's kind of like a cranberry. They're a lot more expensive. They kind of have that little sweetness of a cranberry, but they're also tartness, but not as heavy of a flavor and sweetness as a cranberry, a dry cranberry. So that's, I get the goji berries. You know, they have to clean out stuff since they're eventually going to be moving, get things ready. Oop, as I knock it off here. All right, so I'm going to add all the spices in. And always when I sit, when I talk about spices, because a lot of times and stuff, when you try recipes, you know, you end up, you end up trying it. And, and a lot of times and stuff, when things are plant-based, they end up being overspiced. So even with my recipes, because everybody has different flavor palettes, is like on the sage, like, because I say on here, it's uh, three teaspoons of sage. Try like one teaspoon first and mix it in here like this and then taste it. And then say, if you like, you know, if you like the really, really heavy sage, then add some more to it. Because you can always add, but you can't take away. And what I don't want you to do is to put, even though this is, you know, it's wonderful flavor and stuff, I don't want you to put three teaspoons of sage in and then turn around and be like, ooh, don't like it and throw it away. Don't want any waste. So I'll show you this real quick. It's already, it's already looking, look at that, isn't that delicious? Not doing anything else into it. There's a couple other ways that I can tell you. So on this, so we can actually do the, um, you know, all the soft or the, the wet ingredients here. Another way you can do it, if you've got a great big, huge saucepan, or you maybe have, you know, something like this, like your potato type of cooker, you know, what you can do too, is you can actually add all of your vegetable broth in here with all of your vegetables and make it almost like a sauce. So lots and lots of sauce with this. And then you add just maybe a little bit of flour to kind of thicken it a little bit and then let it cook for a little bit. And then when you've got all the breadcrumbs, you just take that and dump this whole bunch of sauce on there versus just putting vegetable broth on it. And it's really nice because especially if you let it simmer for a while, you've got all the sage and everything else that's in your vegetable broth, which is really good. So I've done it multiple ways. It just depends on how much uh, kitchen space I have and how much time and stuff. But it, it is really good to just put all the vegetable broth and everything in here and let it simmer. Just it's really good. All right, let me check my potatoes, make sure those are looking good. All right, that's all good. So we got the nutmeg, we got everything else in there. Now I'm gonna add the maple syrup. If you don't want maple syrup, do a one-to-one -one with date paste. And date paste is just dates that have been soaked in water and then ground up in your, in your blender. And I, especially now at this time of year, I will usually make up a whole bunch of date paste and I'll, I'll substitute it in and make like the pumpkin cakes with the date paste, um, all those type of different things. So I just, you know, just substituting out the sugar and it's just more of that natural sugar. Okay, that's all mixed in. And then you've got the balsamic vinegar. Just regular balsamic, just whatever you have. You could also add a flavor. So if you wanted to say, if you've got like an apple balsamic or some other type of balsamic that you wanted to add something that is probably a little bit tart and not too sweet, you could add that in there too. All right. And then we've got that, everything all ready with that. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. So we're gonna mix it and get it in the oven. Oh my gosh. It's like the, it's like the sweetness and a little bit of the, the, the vinegar. <clears throat> Yummy. So before I even mix it in, I wanted to show you what it looks like. Mm, yummy. Yeah. You can actually, what you could do too, is you could cool this down and put this on, you know, you could put it on potatoes. You could put it on like a salad. You could put it on quinoa. I mean, there's so many things you could do just with this mixture that it's just, it's delicious. Let's just taste it. Make sure we're good. But really good. Mm. Okay, so we have breadcrumbs. So just nice little chunks. I'm surprised I have any left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did them earlier today just because I figured you didn't want to watch for you know 20, 30 minutes while these are cooking. And so I came and I came downstairs a couple times and Jerry's standing over it. Yep. 
go. Yep, so if you get, you know, if they get like their bigger pieces or something, you know, you can just crunch them up like that. All right, so we've got the apple mixture, so we're gonna add that in. It is so, that is so pretty. It looks like fall, which is what I love. Get all the goodies out. And what I like about it too, like especially if you have a big saute pan and you just have it on the stove for a while, you could make that like the sauce the day ahead of time. So like everything else here with the vegetable broth and the apples and things, and then add it the day of. So it can save you a little bit of time, which is a, a nice way to do it. But it's, you know, the colors, you know, the purples and the and the apples, because I left the peelings on and stuff is, is beautiful. Hi, Candy. All right, got the apple mixture, so you got almonds. So you could use slivered. Um, we've got, we've actually got the sliced. So I had the sliced, so that's what I had in the freezer. So I just put those in. You could use walnuts, you could use pecans, you could use, you know, any type of, of nut that you want. Um, the almonds is, is really good in here, but like I said, if you don't prefer, you don't like almonds and you like something else, pistachios would be really good. That would be, that would be fun. And then the cranberry cherries, but these are the goji berries. So you see, they look just like cranberries. Hard to show because they're so small, but they're not, like I said, they're not as sweet as a cranberry, but they are a lot more expensive. So like, you know, cranberries, you can get a bag for, I don't know, $4.99 or something like that. Goji berries. And I've had these around for a while and stuff and I keep them in a, a glass jar, but goji berries are probably like $16.99 to $18.99 a pound. So a lot more expensive, but I had them and I didn't have to send Jerry all over town looking for cranberries. So that was a good thing. Right. <clears throat> Do it. Dried cranberries. Dried cranberries, yes. Just kind of mix that up a little bit. And then we're going to add the vegetable broth. Okay. Let's grab. And I usually just eyeball it, but since, I, since I'm doing a class, I will definitely um, measure it out. So this is a low sodium vegetable broth, which is really nice. You can get it at Costco. It's organic low sodium. Jerry found this one the other day, which we'd never seen. I think this was at Sprouts. It's called Bonafide and it's no salt, which he was really happy. So no added sugar, no added salt, no citric acid, no, no other icky stuff is what it says. So Bonafide. <clears throat> yeah, so we're gonna try that one. So I use, like I said, I just eyeball it and I kind of play with it. You, if you don't have, let's just say that you, you know, didn't go to the grocery store and you're like, okay, I have everything I need to make this. And then you get into the pantry or, or something and it's only half full, this is only half full, um, feel free to substitute half water, half vegetable broth. You can do that too. I feel like that only has a half there. So we'll open up the Bonafide with no icky stuff. No icky. Smells good. A little darker than the other one. Okay, and then you kind of get in there because you want it, what you want to do is you want to get the bread to soak it up. So depending on your bread, and this bread tends to, the jerry eats and stuff tends to be dense and so it soaks up all the moisture. Just feel free to add some water or more vegetable broth because you want it soft. And I'll kind of show you what that's going to look like. So let me grab, I'm just going to grab a bunch of water. Smelling like Thanksgiving. So I play with it. And if I had my uh, gloves handy, I would actually put the gloves on and put my hands in it. Because you want to make sure that when you really mix it well, because you want to make sure you get all that, you know, all the sage and everything else that's in there all mixed in. Otherwise, it just tastes like toasted bread, which obviously Jerry loves, but for stuffing. All right, we'll just add the rest and we'll mix it and then we're going to get it in the pan, the baking dish. Do a quick little taste. Mm. 
Good. I got an apple in there. All right. So there it is all mixed up. Feel free when you're making this at, you know, at home and things, feel free to always add, you know, more apples, more, you know, more onions, um, all those types of things, because the more ingredients you have, the side ingredients and the kind of the, I guess the, the tasteful things of there versus the bread is always really good. So that's what it looks like. And we have a dish and then I'll start making the bowls. You can always smash it down a little bit when you're, when you're actually kind of dishing it out. And you usually can see is that the six cups, it makes a lot. So depending on, you know, if you're, if you have a bunch of friends and family, good. If it's just you, I would cut, I would cut the bread in half and even and only do like three cups. All right. Make sure you get the good stuff out. There we go. So normally what I would do, because it's, you know, you're, this is usually cooking with everything else that you're doing. I would add the parchment paper first. And then the second thing that I would add would be the um, aluminum foil, or you can just leave the parchment paper on that. But since we're kind of doing the class and I want things to get crispy and ready, I'm not going to add any of the, uh, any of the topping ingredients because it'll get nice and crusty on top. So there it is all ready to go. And it's ready to go in the oven. So here we go. All right. We'll put the no icky stuff on the side here. All right. So now we are going to do vegetables and get those ready. So we have carrots. And in, in this recipe, you know, you'll see that it says broccoli. So sometimes I've done broccoli in classes with this. But feel free to add whatever vegetables you want. So if you like, you know, if you don't like Brussels sprouts, then, you know, grab some broccoli, carrots, you know, there's zucchini, there's, you know, there's all these vegetables that are out there right now. So these are the carrots. So I just sliced them up. Just kind of like nice little, little sticks. And then I'm going to add vegetable broth. If you don't have vegetable broth, water works just fine. And then a little bit of brown sugar. This is where this is where you could actually substitute in the um, the date paste again. Also, let's do this. So all you're trying to do is just get a little bit of the sweetness to it. Jerry would tell you that uh, if he was doing it on his own, he would probably not add any sweetness to it because he's like carrots are sweet when they're baked anyway. But it's nice about the little bit of um, and you could actually do agave too or the maple syrup. It adds the it starts giving the caramelization on the on the uh, carrots, which is really nice. Okay, let's grab this. So we got a baking dish covered in parchment paper. We'll spread these out because we're going to roast them. If you don't have time to roast them, you can put them in a pan. And you can sauce them up that way. All right, so we still have the same ingredients. So I still have the vegetable broth and the, the um, brown sugar. So then Brussels sprouts. Those seem to always be really, you know, really familiar and everybody really likes them during the holidays. Usually they have all kinds of bacon and all kinds of like pomegranate seeds and all that. You could still have the pomegranate seeds. We just don't do the bacon anymore. So I'm going to add those in. Those are just nice chops. So I did them in just little bite sized little bite sized pieces so that they'll actually roast up really well, but not overpower. Cause like if you leave them whole, they tend to overpower the dish a little bit. So Jerry used to hate Brussels sprouts. He used to hate that's what he used to <clears throat> now. Now he's like, mm. likes them. Yep. He looks at them as little cabbage heads. Yep. So every once in a while, we always talk about, I always talk about Jerry's stories and stuff that there's a lot of times and stuff when I was getting ready to cook for all the classes, <laughs> we were doing all the face-to-face -face, like at Whole Foods and natural grocers and all that. He'd be like, it's like, well, what do we have? And so he'd look at the recipes and it would be like a, um, I don't know, like Moroccan shepherd's pie or, or something like that. Oh, and he's like, I'm going to eat before I get there. And then when he, then he would end up, um, I'd make it all together and he'd be like, Oh, you can make that again. <laughs> so there's lots of mm -hmm. things that he's always like, yeah, I don't think so. Like, uh, Thai burritos that we've made. And, and, um, we did an eggplant, uh, BLT that is like this thick and about this big around. It's absolutely delicious. <clears throat> and he's like, yeah, you can make that again too. Yeah. 
So I just the same thing, just put them in the sauce, just the vegetable broth and the um, brown sugar. I'll put these on here, get them all, get the leaves, everything. And then since I have a little bit of extra, just drizzle, no waste. All right, this is gonna go in an oven and roast out. Nothing better than roasted vegetables. And you could do like, you know, you could do roasted onions, you could do all kinds of different things in here. So you could almost do like a whole platter like this of the vegetables and the vegetables all roasted. And you could do like, what is it? Um, like turnips and parsnip and all those that you could add in there, which would be really, really good. So in the oven. Get my hands. Now, a little bit of clean up here. Okay, so we've got the roasted sweet roasted carrots, the roasted Brussels sprouts. If you do broccoli, um, you just do the same thing. So you could just, you know, you could you could not put the um, the brown sugar on it. You just put like the vegetable broth and then just put them in the oven and roast them out. So kind of think about like your vegetables and stuff. So like Brussels sprouts and carrots, they're gonna roast about the same time. So if you put like parsnips and turnips and things like that together, then those would all roast out, roast out, <clears throat> excuse me, roast out at the same time. But if you add broccoli, add that more towards the end because your broccoli will get kind of burnt and cauliflower and things like that. So, you know, just think about your vegetables and how quick they cook and then kind of add them in as you're, as you're roasting and you're getting closer to where everything else is done. But yeah, I would, I truthfully, I mean, if this was, I just say if Jerry and I were going to be home this, um, this Thanksgiving, instead of going over to his daughter's house and stuff, we would actually I would make up just a whole platter of roasted vegetables of all kinds, like anything I could find in the store and make that up. And then it would be that we just have this big, you know, thing of like corn and all kinds of great stuff, which would be wonderful. All right. So we're going to get that. So let's get the cranberry sauce going because the potatoes are cooking. They're actually ready, but I want those to be warm when we're making that. So I want to grab a little pot. So you could use regular like canned cranberry sauce. Um, and, or you can find cranberry sauce, like it, you know, like a, most of your, um, like the deli areas and stuff in your stores, they usually do it. It's, there's usually not anything bad in the cranberry sauce. Usually a lot of times when they make it in stores, they're going to have, you know, like oranges and sometimes they'll put apples in it and nuts and all that. So there's, there's nothing wrong with just make, you know, getting a bot, uh, just buying one. Um, there's some people that I've, that I know that make some really, really good ones. This one's just really simple to make and it's kind of nice to have around. So Jerry's not a big cranberry fan. I like them, but. So we're making them. All right, so if you're following along, so where it's cranberry sauce, you add to small, so we're just adding to a small pan. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'll leave some for holidays. And then you've got, and then we're gonna actually add the orange juice. So we looked over on the side, it's orange juice. So one orange juice and grated. If you don't wanna grab an orange and it's just easier to use like orange juice, you can do that too. And I just, what I did with the orange, instead of just squeezing it, I went in there with a spoon and I scraped off, you know, I scraped out all the pulp and, and all those kind of things. So I've got, I've got it where it's grated on the outside. So don't grate it too much because you get into the white part and then you get it really, it's really like tart and sour. Um, and then I just did the, as much pulp and juice that I could get. So I'm gonna add that in there. And then we're gonna add ginger. So my ginger, I keep in the freezer. So this is a tip and trick. So ginger, a lot of times when you buy it, you know, you get these really nice pieces and this is probably what a $2.99, $3.99 um, piece of ginger. But a lot of times what you do is you buy it and then you use just a little bit of it and then you put it in your, like your crisper that's supposed to keep things fresh for a long time. And then when you come back out and you get ready to use the ginger, it's like this thing is about this size and it's all shriveled up. So what you do is just keep your ginger in the freezer in a bag like this. And, and then when you've got it, when it's, when you need it, you just grab your handy dandy, like microplane or grater, and then you just grate off however much you need and then put it back in the bag and put it back in the freezer. And then you have fresh ginger all the time and you never have to worry about it at, uh, going bad. The cool thing about this too, is a lot of times and stuff, they'll say scrape off all this, all the skin off of it. You don't have to do that when you freeze it. So every once in a while, there'll be like a, you know, there'll be a piece like this or something, a little tiny piece that comes out and you can just pull that, pull that out. But when you're grating it and getting things ready, it actually just grates right up, which is really nice. And you get that fresh ginger, which is like in stir fries or, you know, when you're doing other like desserts and things like that, there's nothing better than fresh ginger. 
So a great way to keep ginger for a long time. So the ginger we were looking at is a tablespoon. If I just, you know, grab a piece, start grating it. And then you, nothing better than fresh ginger. A little more, a little more ginger never hurts. It smells like so wonderful. So back, back in the bag, the baggie. I turn it over, back in the freezer, the way it goes. I always show like, you know, usually when I'm doing, when I'm doing classes and things, you know, there's a lot of things that I put in the freezer. I gotta watch these because these will start popping a little bit. I'll put them in the freezer. And so, you know, I'll do like on a Sunday. So like now I'm getting kind of low. So I'll actually roast up like 10 heads of garlic and I'll put them in the, put them in the oven just right on the, on the, um, the shelves and I'll roast them up. So like 350 for about an hour. And then I'll peel them all down and put them in a baggie like this and little, and little, you know, like little uh, chunks, I guess, like four or five cloves together. And then I use them for all kinds of different things. So if you want like more of a roasted garlic, this is an easy way to do it. And it's like all done because it's in your freezer, which is really nice. There's all kinds of things like that that are just make life easier. They have like roasted garlic because there's a huge difference when you do like tomato sauces with garlic and tomato sauces with roasted garlic. Huge difference and change of how things taste. You smell it? It's like oranges and, and, and uh, ginger. If it gets a little dry, so, you know, as your cranberries are cooking and it gets a little dry, you know, just grab, you can grab a little bit of water or if you have um, some more like orange juice, and I think I might, oh, I some. just add a little bit more. But don't add a lot, because the last thing you want to do is have ran, uh, runny cranberry sauce. And they break down, as you can see, they start, the cranberries break down really quick. So it doesn't take much to get really good cranberry sauce. But like I said, you don't have to make it. You can always buy it. Because I've, I've had some store-bought cranberry sauces that have been made and they're really good. I think that's probably gonna be good. I'll just leave that to the side. <clears throat> It smells so good. And I'm gonna grab a bowl because we're gonna put that in the fridge. I might even put it in the freezer just because we're making it fresh. So it's one of those things I kind of have like to have like maybe room temperature, not, you know, it could be cold, but definitely not warm cranberry sauce. Recently, have heard about a product called Fresh, fresh Paper, veggies and fruit, yes. Yeah, we use We've it. actually seen that before, so yeah. Fresh Paper. And it's, it's like in little sheets, um, if I had some, I think I packed it, um, but it's really good that you can put in like your crisper drawers and it seems to work really well. There's a, it was a, a, like a scientist and stuff that created it. Yeah, it's called Fresh Paper and I think we got it off of Amazon. I think we can buy it too. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That actually helps, you know, cook. Yeah, everything's two to, two to four times longer. Yep, I agree, thank you. I forgot about that. Just let that cook. Put that bowl there. All right. Now, like that. So we have got, so we'll be making the gravy here in just a second. So I'm gonna get the mashed potatoes ready. It's amazing to show you. Like what, maybe five, 10 minutes I've been talking, look at the Brussels sprouts already. All the crispness that's already added to those. Yum. So when they, just to move, you need to move them around a little bit. Just kind of flip them. That way you can get the crispy, the crispy edges on everything. And back in the oven. Stuffing soon well. Oh, 
What's really good too, like in um, cranberry sauces, is actually if you had a little bit of the apples left over, you could put some of the apple chunks in or even like um, um, orange slices. It's really good too. So you've got the chunkiness and then you've got, if you've got like a, you know, pecans or something like that, you can put that in there too. All right, just do taste, super good. Cranberries right now are very tart. Let me dump that out. So if it's a little too tart for you, you could always add a little bit of date paste, a little bit of agave, a little bit of monk, a monk fruit sweetener, um, any of those type of things. But nothing better, nothing better than fresh cranberry sauce. So that's what it looks like. And you can see all the steam rolling off of it and stuff. So I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator for a little bit, just to let it cool down. And that's a perfect amount. So like I did half of it, that's a perfect amount for me because Jerry won't eat the cranberry sauce. Go. And the nice thing is you notice I just, I was actually running my hand across the burner. When you do an induction burner and stuff, making sure you have the right type and stuff, it doesn't, it's not hot. Love the color and texture. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Like I said, you could add like, you know, fresh fruit into it, make it taste a little bit different. You could add pomegranate seeds, which will give you that, that really nice uh, flavors and things like that. Or you could add nuts, apples, all the good stuff. All right, so potatoes have been cooking. So they're just, you know, regular boiling in the, excuse me, in the water. So Jerry bought me some potatoes that are a little bit bigger, but if you want to do it, you can do those little tiny creamer potatoes like that that are about that big. And then you can boil those up and those are really easy to mash. So we did a little bit bigger, which is fine. So it works the same. So let me drain them really quick. And I'll drain them. So there's are in here. So a couple things with mashed potatoes. You could do, like if you wanted to, you could do a garlic mashed potato, which would be really good with this too. Um, if you do a garlic mashed potato, you're going to do the same thing with the, with the soy milk and you can do your salt and pepper. And then you just add a little bit of the, like a garlic powder into it because you don't need to add the real garlic, so garlic powder, and then taste it, and they make really, really good, like garlic mashed potatoes, which is really good, like the next day, especially if you do something that's like a, an Italian, like spaghetti sauce with it and that, love them. Um, these, I'm just gonna do plain. So you can either do the regular milk, just like, you know, right out of the fridge, so soy milk, almond milk, whatever you'd like to do, and you can do it cold, or if you wanna take the time, you can actually warm up your milk, and that's another way that, that a lot of people like to do it. They like to have it, um, warm milk that's added. It's funny, we used to, um, when I was first taking things over to, to Jerry's daughter's house, one of the things that she's like, oh, I'll make my own mashed potatoes and I'll, you know, I'll do, plug it in here. Um, I'll do all my own things. And then we brought everything over and she tasted it. And she's like, that tastes just like mine. And we're like, no butter. Yep, no butter, no, you know, none of the cream cheese, which I've had those, those are good, but they're very rich. Um, and that's a long, long time ago, but, um, and she's like, God, you can just, she says, I'll just have you make all the other sides. She says, it's just as good as what I would make. And I'm like, good. So that's what we do now. So I've got, I've got the, um, we're going to do that. So a cup of soy milk and play with it because sometimes just like with the, um, the bread that we were, that we were doing too, it'll soak up a lot of moisture. So depending on your potatoes. So if you need more, just, uh, just keep it handy. And then you can do the, the regular hand masher if you want, or I just use the little hand mixer, which I really like. So I would say these are soaking up, so do I know? I like them creamy.
So this is where you could add the pepper. You could add the salt. You could add the garlic powder. I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper in there. A quick little mix. Taste. Just give me a spoon. I'd be happy. Love mashed potatoes. There they all are, nice and creamy and ready to go. So I'm going to put the lid on them so I can keep them nice and warm as we're doing this. I'll take this off to the side. Unplug. There we go. Check all the vegetables. Oops. <laughs> One on the floor. Starting to get nice and crispy. So the, the, the carrots are almost done. I'd say the Brussels sprouts are, are doing really good. Um, so I will actually just kind of bury them like under the side so they don't get too much crispy. And I'm gonna give it about two or three more minutes for carrots. Let's get those going. Check the stuffing. Oh my good. Mm, smells good. All right, let's get this out of the way. Gravy. All right, so this is probably one of the easiest vegan gravies. If I actually found that I had made a mistake on the recipe, so it said one tablespoon of vegetable broth, it's of course, that's not gonna make much gravy. So it's actually half a box of vegetable broth. So with this one, I'll do a half a box. So that's usually about, probably about two cups. And we're gonna try the no icky. I like it said, no icky stuff. All right, and then we've got um, two tablespoons of flour. So if you're if you're looking at that, so we've got the heat the, the heat the vegetable broth. So we're going to start that. We'll get that hot. And this is like the easiest gravy because there's a lot of times you know you're making the roux and you're getting everything all put together um, and you're adding the milks and all those products. This is probably the easiest gravy I've ever had, and it's really really good. So once so once we got that the vegetable broth hot, so it starts to boil up. Let me put the lid on. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add we're going to add all the different spices and flour. So we've got so the different spices that we have for the gravy is we've got onion powder, thyme, and oregano. So be careful with the oregano. So like if you're not a big oregano fan, I would start like maybe with an eighth of a teaspoon of your oregano and then try it and see what you like. But the thyme is um, and hopefully everybody likes thyme because the thyme is really what makes the difference. In it. it just gives a really nice flavor. I have to scrape it out a little bit because it was in the refrigerator. It's just a really nice earthy gravy. And every time I've made it for like classes or I've made it for um, just eating at home or whatever, everybody loves it. They think it's, it takes a lot to do, but it doesn't. Okay, got my whisk. And then we've got, so we've got carrots, Brussels sprouts, potatoes, I'm making the gravy. We got the cranberry sauce and then we got toppings, which of course is just the toasted pecans. That's all ready. And then we've got the fruit and nut stuffing, which I'm gonna grab out while this is getting ready to boil. And let me pick up the Brussels sprout. I'm gonna step it on it. All right. Vegetables are ready. Everything out of the way. Turn that that way. And I thought I had another. Right. <laughs> Yummy. Fruit and nest stuffing. So nothing better when it's crunchy on top and soft in the middle. That's all ready to go. Doesn't take long for it to cook. All right, this is boiling. There's work. I was like, where's my other hot pad? Put that off to the side. 
Okay, so as you're following along on the recipe, so we just, because I always try to make sure, so we've got everything there. So we're gonna whisk in the flour. So just kind of get your whisk going and then just add the flour. A little bit at a time, because the last thing you wanna do is clumps. What you could do too, and my mom used to do this all the time. So like when she would do the milk, um, you know, add the milk and the flour and stuff into the, the gravy that she was making, the white gravy, she would, you know, put everything into like a mason jar. So she would take some of the, the hot uh, liquid, put it in there and add the flour and the milk, and then kind of, you gotta be careful too, because it'll start bubbling up. Um, add it all in together and then just pour it in versus sitting there whisking it. So she never had them, it'll be gravy. And then I'm gonna add the, the spices. So we talked about that we had, so we've got the three of them, which is onion powder, thyme, and oregano. Just keep a nice fast whisk on it. Pull it off the burner, me too. And if it doesn't thicken up, just like, you know, just like some things, you know, sometimes they don't thicken up and sometimes they do, then just add a little bit more flour. But you'll know too, that once it starts cooling down, it thickens up a lot faster too. So I'm just gonna put stir to it and then we will get making the bowl. So it, it can be, you know, you can keep doing it and let it cool down or add more flour and really get it to where it's like really, really thick, or you could make it where it's kind of halfway in between. So right now, like you can see, it's probably in between. So it's, I'm going to let it cook just a little bit longer as I'm watching it, but it's, it's enough to where you're going to get the gravy and it's going to coat everything, but it's not so thick that it's like clumpy. But if it ever gets too thick, like it's sitting on your, on your stove, just add a little bit more vegetable broth and water and it'll thin right out and just, just whisk it like this. Put it on a medium low so it doesn't won't try to boil over. All right, Jerry's bowl. Jerry's bowl. <clears throat> yep. All right, so I've got I've got a little like an ice cream scoop. I'm gonna grab the mashed potatoes. And everybody's like watching my gravy and going like, hey, it's gonna spill over. Okay. So you always like put the mashed potatoes in the middle. If you have, if you have mashed potatoes, like if you did the, the melting sweet potatoes, from last week. And if you didn't get the last week melting sweet potatoes, just send me an email like Kelly, K E L L E Y, at Plant Based Kitchen. And I am more than happy to send it to you because then you could do like half, like your, your mashed potatoes and then your half of your sweet potatoes. And then you could add everything else around it. It's on the meetup site too. Yep. And it is on the meetup site. Okay. There we go. Events. Okay. So then I'm going to do this real quick and wash this off. And you don't have to have an ice cream scoop. That's not part of the recipe. It's just more fun. Especially when I'm doing pictures. All right, so we got the, got the stuffing. Add that in. Get the goji berry. And there's a couple apples, so I'll get those on top. And so you're building the bowl. So you're building everything kind of around it. So you've got all the different parts and pieces. So we've got the cranberry sauce. I'm going to get that. Nice little bit cooled off. I'm going to turn this off. All right. Carrots. Mm. 
is a huge hole. Jerry's favorite. Party. You tell you have to unbutton your pants. It's Isn't low, that what Thanksgiving's all about? It's low fat. <laughs> right. And then we've got the Brussels sprouts. Knock them all over the place. All right, we've got, so normally I'll have the cranberry sauce on there too, so. You can add it though. <laughs> you'll eat that cranberry. And then you've got, so if you've got something else you wanna add, I'm gonna add um, a little bit more of the carrots over here. Cause this is a very big bowl. Okay, got the cranberry sauce. We have the carrots, make those stand up. We have, I'll do the pecans here in a minute. Grab a big spoon. Make sure, did I get everything? Yep. Okay, keep me honest. I, I'm actually adding some of the gravy and stuff to the stuffing. It just makes it better. Clean up the bowl. And ah. there you go. There is your Thanksgiving bowl. So you have Brussels sprouts, you have roasted carrots, you have stuffing, you have the mashed potatoes, we have the gravy that's on top, and then we have the uh, homemade cranberry sauce. So if you had like the broccoli and stuff, you could actually add that and not have the double carrots. But I guarantee you, Jerry will grab a big spoon and this will be dinner tonight. Yep. Doesn't that look good? Nothing better than a bowl that try all the different things and have all the goodies in one big bowl. And just have a side salad. And a side salad. <laughs> We're not making a side salad. This is your dinner tonight. Lots of starches and lots of good things. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope and please try this. And like I said, if you need any other recipes or anything like that, let me know, but please try it. Let me know what you think. And because uh, I always love hearing from you or say, or say, hey, I made a bunch of roasted vegetables and I did something completely different. Would love to hear your ideas, but I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving and uh, enjoy the rest of the night. Yep. Beautiful, mm -hmm. thank you. Looks Thank delicious. You. Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. You. All right. Bye. Have a nice night. Love you guys. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Yum.